In this presentation, we're going to look at joint probability distributions of continuous random variables. So we have the random variables x and y, and they have a joint probability distribution given as follows. f of x, y, small f there, actually that's how we would write a joint probability distribution for two continuous random variables. It is equal to, we'll look at this part in particular, 3x if this condition is followed. This actually, this condition here is actually very important, okay, in answering this question. So we have 0 less than or equal to y, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 1. Now I've fogged that up there, so let's just take that out. That's actually quite important. That gives us two very important pieces of information. Strictly, y is less than x, okay? So the range of values for y is 0 to x. And x, the range of values for x is y up to 1. Okay, that's actually very, very important. It actually sort of, you don't really look at those parts of the question so much uh, when you're doing these sort of things, because usually there's something very obvious or very typical. This one's actually a bit, it's more important what goes in here, actually. You have to pay more attention to it in this particular question. Okay, so these are important because we will use these as our uh, upper and lower bounds when we're doing definite integrals later on. Okay, so anyway, determine the marginal densities of x and y, state with reasons whether x and y are independent, and determine the expected values of x and y. Now, actually, to be honest with you, I've really broken the question, but uh, really given the, the key part of this question, how to solve it there, and that's it there. But we'll do it out anyway. So, part A, determine the marginal probability densities of x and y. Essentially, what we do is the, mar the marginal density of x is essentially the joint probability function dif integrated with respect to y, okay? So we're differentiating with, uh, sorry, integrating with respect to y. Now this is where the limits are important here, okay? So we have zero and x. Now the range of values of y is zero to x, so that's why those are our limits of integration, okay, for this definite integral. Now, that's it essentially. So essentially, when we that's it really. So the integrating the joint PDF with respect to y gives us the marginal density of x. That's how we would do this question. Okay, and it actually turns out to be turns out to be very straightforward here. Now it's a very str straightforward definite integral. The integral of three x dy. That's three x y. And when we have the upper and lower bound of, I'll just actually. It doesn't really come out there that well. The upper and lower bound is, there we go. So essentially, when we evaluate that at y equals x, we get 3x squared. And when we evaluate that at y equals 0, we get 0. So the answer is 3x squared for 0 to 1. OK. So now that means we've, this uh, means for the entire range of values of x and y. Now, similarly, we do something for y. So when we're looking for the marginal density of y, we integrate the joint PDF, the joint probability density, density function with respect to x, okay, dx. Now, again, the range of values of x is one and up from one, uh, y up to one, okay? So that's why those, uh, we have those there uh, as our upper and lower bound. Okay, so again, it's a very straightforward integration, 3x dx, okay, and uh, so we end up at 3x squared over 2 with our upper and lower limits of y equal to 1 and y, e x, sorry, x equal to 1 and x equal to y, okay, so we evaluate it at 1, we just get, a two, we'll t take out the 3 over 2 out of it, and we will get, when we evaluate x squared at 1, we just get 1. And when we evaluate it at y, we get y squared. Okay. And again, the range of values is 0 to 1. Actually, correctly, that should be y there. Never mind. Sorry, that's a little typo there. So those are our two marginal density functions for x and y. So the next question asks us, state with reasons 
whether these are independent. Now this is a very straightforward one. It's very simple to do this one quickly. You can just explicitly state they're not independent because the marginal uh, PDFs, the marginal probability density functions, when you multiply them out, do not give you the joint density function. Before I continue, I'm going to set up a new video actually, but before I continue, what I should do here is remark upon these limits here a little bit more. So we have the marginal density of y is between 0 and 1. And up here in the previous question, where is it? It's also 0 and 1 here. Now, basically we don't have any information about the range of the values uh, for the marginal density functions. What we, what we were told about the joint probability density functions doesn't necessarily apply. We just know that they're in that range of values. So for the sake of simplicity, and because we've no further information, essentially the range of values there are 0 and 1. And we're going to use those in the next part of the question. Okay? And it also it, it keeps it nice and simple. Okay, moving on to the last part, we are asked to find the expected value of x and the expected value of y. This is using the, using the marginal probability density functions that we found previously. So, and essentially what we do here is just use the general sort of format of x times f of x dx and integrate that from our limits. Now, we said that our, we'll use the limit 0 to 1 because, as far as we know, the x is present in that range of numbers okay so and the marginal de uh, density function probability density function for x is 3x squared and we multiply that by x to, to get 3x squared okay now we're going to integrate that and let's scroll down a bit here so 3x squared sorry 3x cubed is what we get and when we integrate that we get 3x to the power of 4 over 4 our limits of integration are 1 and 0, so when we evaluate this expression here at 1, we get 3 quarters, and when we evaluate it at 0, we just get 0, so we end up simply with 3 quarters. And for the expected value of y, we do the same thing. Now, it's a little bit more complicated in this case, and also we're using y. The limits are the same, 1 and 0, so y times f of y dy, okay? And y times 3 over 2 times 1 minus y squared. A little bit more work on this. Let's take the 3, 3 over 2 out of it. So we have the integral of y minus y cubed. Now remember, we're putting that, those y's in there, multiplying that in, that y into the 1 minus y squared. So we have y becomes, when we integrate that, becomes y squared over 2, y cubed is y to the power of 4 over 4 and again 3 over 2 on is our we're going to multiply that in later the limits of integration or the bounds of integration are 1 and 0 so when we evaluate it at well actually when we evaluate it at 1 we get 1 half minus 1 quarter and when we evaluate it at 0 we just get 0 again so that that's a tr sort of trivial case so 3 over 2 times 1 half minus 1 quarter, okay? And again, that's the evaluation for when it, it, y is equal to 1, okay? And y equal to 0 is simply 0 minus 0. So we have 3 over 2 times a quarter. And let's scroll down a bit there to get our final answer, which is 3 over 8. So that is it. That is this joint probability density function question. Thank you very much.